As we all know, Santa's workshop is legendary, but it is not the only workshop running at capacity in the days before Christmas. We want to show you a place that, well, they don't make as many toys as the Jolly Old Elf, but they do have something in common. They work year-round. On tonight's Only in Indiana, Eyewitness News reporter Kevin Rader and photographer John DeWong take us to the land of 10,000 toys. If you've ever imagined what a toy shop looked like, We'll make one real quick. It's doubtful you envisioned this makeshift garage Here it is. on the city's north side. Uh, let's use one of those as a pattern. We make basic, uh, sturdy, dependable wooden toys. It's also doubtful you would have pictured these basic, sturdy, dependable toy makers. And these are not drilled consistently. There are five toy maker shops like this one spread out across the city, and together they craft 10,000 wooden toys for 28 central Indiana agencies to dispense for Christmas. The dowel was too big to go. At 82, Bob Hall is the group's senior member. When I was a kid, I had wooden toys uh, given to me, and uh, I just have a, a fondness for them. This plane really does take a lot of little parts. But I think we're making 40 of those this, this time. It's one of my favorites. As you can well imagine, the wish list is long. 109 boxes, 100 plaques, 27 doll beds, and all in all. I know that. I believe that we have it uh, worked out. You would think the central Indiana woodworkers would have all this routine pounded out by now, but since some children remain in the system for some years, the toys need to be changed. As an example, the planes have gone from World War II P-40s to F-14. Now I can really go tearing into this. For years, these guys only crafted cars, trucks, and planes and the like. But then, Marcel Everest, a retired consumer credit counselor, joined the group five years ago. And? Yeah, we do quite a few things for girls. Probably about 50-50 now, um, which I think is good. Girls need toys, too. O.C. Morris is a former barber, so he trims up the plaques, among other things. And I didn't want to be one of those guys that... Uh, Get up every morning and put my clothes on, watch TV. Let's use one of those as a pattern. Neither did Don Malloy, a retired AT&T employee. He organizes this chapter. We got another one here we can make. Too. After all, it's his workshop. Uh, we'll exceed 10,000 toys. It puts a smile on my face all year long because we make them all year long. It has to be hard to tell the forest from the trees, or in this case, the toys, until early December when they're ready to be shipped out. This is not, some child uh, at Christmas time is going to be playing around with one of these things, and uh, he won't really care what I went through to try to, to make it a successful toy. That is true. These unlikely toy makers will never see their faces, and the children We'll never see theirs. We'll say that a little bit. It's a trade-off that you make in life when you live your life for others. In this case, in the land of 10,000 toys. Kevin Rader, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Beautiful toys, too. And they tell us that work for next year will begin next month. Boy, oh boy, I guess they need that much time to make 10,000 toys. Well, Kevin has a weekly series, and if you have an idea that you would like for him to cover in this series only in Indiana that we air here on Wednesday nights, make sure you reach out to Kevin. You can send him an email at krader at wthr.com.